Hi everyone, George here, and welcome to another video from the GFS Gallery. Feels like it's been absolutely ages since I've last done a fully produced video for you guys, but here we are. The main content of this video is largely going to be focusing on my Aquascaper 1200. Lots of updates to tell you about. So I want to give you some detailed shots of the plants, talk about them in more detail, talk about my new maintenance practices, and talk about the IAPLC, the International Aquatic Plant Layout Contest, which at the time of filming, deadline for entries is due this Sunday. So I want to tell you a little bit about what I've been up to in the last few weeks where I haven't been releasing videos. I have been doing regular live streams every Sunday at 7 p.m. So make sure you join them. I am planning on doing them for the foreseeable future. So every Sunday, 7 p.m. UK time. It's an aquascaping community hangout where people can just have a chat in the live chat, etc. but also a Q&A and you can have the opportunity to get your questions answered prior to the stream by jumping over onto my Instagram account. And every Sunday morning, I post a story where it gives you the option to type in your question and I pick out the top five or six questions to be answered during that stream. So dive on over to Instagram and make sure you follow me there. Yeah, the reason I haven't kind of been uploading so much frequently on regular videos on the channel is largely because I've been so busy finishing off the book which has now been sent off to the designers, 45,000 words, 257 photos. Most photos are completely exclusive to the book, so you wouldn't have seen them before, even if you follow me on my channels. And I'll release more details on the book as we get nearer the publishing date and the release date, which is at the moment November the 10th this year. So I have been working on other videos for other brands, especially Tropica and Awaze. I do recommend following them on YouTube. Tropica in particular, I'm usually uploading at least one or two videos per week, one plant profile video and then an aquarium update video as well. So check out the Tropica YouTube channel and check out the Awaze YouTube channel as well. I've just recently set up my Awaze Styline 125 and they will be releasing the full step-by-step -step tutorial on that very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the Awaze UK YouTube channel. So it's great to be back in front of the camera talking to you guys and I'm really excited to tell you all about the Aquascaper 1200 in particular. As I said, lots to update you on, loads of uh, great growth from the plants. We've done some minor changes to the foreground and I've been really focusing a lot on the maintenance recently in order to get it ready for the International Aquatic Plant Layout Contest. I will leave a link to that in the description. I'd like to encourage you to perhaps enter the contest. It's free to join, it's online only. You can send in your photos. You have a chance of competing with countries from all over the world. I think there's normally about 60 countries, between two and 3,000 competitors. And I think the top prize is a million Japanese yen, which I think is at the moment about 10,000 US dollars. I think the best I've ever ranked is 169. So I'm not the obviously the best aquascaper in the world, but for me, it's more about representing my country and more importantly than that it's actually given me a focus and a motivation to create and maintain the best aquascape that I can and I think contests are really great at helping to focus your hobby and get the best out of your aquascapes. The deadline is in a few days so I do need to do a couple more water changes and get it ready for the final photo shoot. I'll put some more lighting over it to get the best quality photo that I can. I'm hoping that the red stem plants in the back there, the Limnophila hipparoides, will grow just as I want them to. And yeah, we will look forward to seeing how it ranks. I'd be very surprised if it gets in top 200, but let's uh, wait and see. So now I'll run through the equipment I'm currently running and detail my methodologies that help to achieve the results that I'm enjoying. I'll also go into the planting details and explain my maintenance techniques. The tank itself is an Aquascaper 1200 from Evolution Aqua. It's actually the first ever Aquascaper aquarium ever built, a pre-production prototype model, and consequently suffers from some micro-bubbling in the silicone. There is a small risk of it leaking, so soon I'm actually planning on replacing this entire tank with something bigger and better. How exciting! Its total volume is around 320 litres, or 85 gallons, and with it being deeper front to back than it is tall, it gives a great footprint for aquascaping. The glass is low iron with clean silicone and this in combination with a clear background, glass lily pipe outlet and inlet gives minimal distraction. The lighting is the Twinstar 1200 SA which is running at full power 
for eight hours a day and I've positioned the unit towards the rear of the aquarium to achieve maximum growth and coloration of the background stem plants, especially the red in the Limnophila hyperoides. I've been using twin star lights for many years now and find them to be a great performer at a reasonable price. I actually have two Chihiros RGB Vivids to try out soon and I'm planning on producing a comparison review video for you guys so you can look forward to that. Filtration and circulation is provided by the awesome Awanze Biomaster 600 Thermo which incorporates a built-in heater and quick release pre-filter which is super simple and quick to clean. I love these filters and they're largely the reason I approached Awanze to officially support me and this channel over a year ago now. I used to run two filters but decided to try just the one and it copes well with this setup. The heater is set to 24 Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. I'm running a pressurised CO2 system from the US brand Greenleaf Aquariums. It's a high-end dual stage regulator with solenoid and built-in bubble counter and I'm running an inline CO2 diffuser from CO2 Art. This gives a very fine CO2 mist that gets circulated all over the tank really well to feed the plants consistently. I have the CO2 come on two hours before the lights and off 30 minutes before the lights go off. This allows the CO2 to build up so the plants can begin photosynthesizing more efficiently as soon as the lights come on. The bubble rate is set to around 5 or 6 bubbles a second which gives me around 30 parts per million CO2. To feed the plant leaves I'm adding 25 millilitres of Tropica Specialised Nutrition per day using a D&D P1 automatic doser that adds the liquid fertiliser just before the lights come on. This is a comprehensive fertiliser that contains all the required nutrients in one 5 litre bottle. Smaller bottles are available. As you can see the aquascape is looking nice and mature and almost all of the plants are in peak condition. Starting in the foreground I have a mixture of Helanthium tenalum green and Hydrocotyle verticillata. I love the mushroom like effect of the Hydrocotyle with it creating a lovely accent against the dense carpet of Helanthium. Moving to the centre of the aquascape I've recently removed the carpet and a portion of the Tropica aquarium soil and replaced it with an open sand foreground which I think adds a pleasant contrast. Small portions of Cryptocorone parva create a nice transition from the full carpet to the white sand. Anubius Petite and Anubius Mini Coin are attached to the Frodo stone and I've also recently added a pot of Micranthemum Monte Carlo as an epiphyte. I really love this addition in particular because it helps offset an otherwise very symmetrical design. Towards the midground, I have a large variety of crypts mixed almost randomly to create a more naturalistic look. These now need thinning out every week in order to prevent them from suffocating one another. I love the variety of colours and textures these bring to the aquascape and they remain my favourite group of plants ever. In the background we have the classic Hygrophila Siamensis 53b to the left and right and in the centre we have the Limnophila hyperoides, the beautiful red stem plant. These are both fast growers and easy stem plants perfect for most setups. To get the best red coloration Stronger lighting is usually required and this obviously results in even faster growth but I think it's worth the extra maintenance. I've cut these stems right back four or five times now and they grow back even bushier each time. Now the lower portions are really struggling though due to the lack of light and if I wanted to keep this aquascape running in its current form for much longer I'd have to remove the stems completely and replant the tips. The focal point plant is this epic trident fern, Microsorum terrapus trident. I've thinned this out regularly by removing the unhealthiest leaves directly from the rhizome which helps to avoid die-off from any leaves that aren't getting sufficient light or circulation. I find trident fern actually needs really good light and nutrients, CO2 and circulation to get the best results. It will survive in low tech tanks but you will struggle to get it to look its best. Having restricted travel during this lockdown has enabled me to focus more time on maintaining this aquascape and I'm doing a large running water change every three days. The water is siphoned into my garden to feed my plants whilst fresh water is being pumped in at the same time. During this process I clean the glass and trim the plants. I've really noticed a significant improvement in overall plant health, less nuisance algae and more active fish since undertaking this regular water change regime. It's now a habit so I don't even think about it and although the task isn't the best of fun I love seeing the results afterwards. I dechlorinate the water at the end of the water change with Fritz Aquatics ACCR which is super easy to use. I just pop in a spoonful of the dry powder. Luckily my tap water doesn't contain much chlorine so I'm comfortable doing this at the end of the water change. Finally I clean the aquarium glass with Fritz Aquatics glass and acrylic cleaner. I love this because it's non-toxic and makes the glass easier to clean each time by giving it an invisible coating that repels dust, fingerprints and water spots. 
So there we have it guys, a full update on my Aquascaper 1200 Nature Aquarium Aquascape that I'm going to be entering into the International Aquatic Plant Layout Contest very soon. I love this Aquascape, it's taught me so much over the last couple of months in particular. I've been very grateful to spend more time enjoying and observing my own aquariums at home and I hope you have too. Take care, keep on scaping, cheerio. Bye.